In a world where there is constant discord and endless struggle to preserve, persevere and to exist, as well as endless problems, there can never be too many heroes. The humanitarian water and food abroad is a platform whereby these champions come together and celebrate their success of solving and curing the diseases that affect our world, a planet that is yours and mine, and air that is ours. They've done their part. What will we do to us? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the humanitarian water and food abroad. So it means together um, with our regional director Baudelaire. Uh, we are so happy to be here today. Um, since 2006, Soil has been promoting dignity, health, and sustainable livelihoods in Haiti through the transformation of wastes into resources. Haiti is a beautiful country full of passionate people, but historically it has dealt with crippling debt and various forms of failed interventions that have resulted in many, many issues, such as little infrastructure, unstable politics, low levels of education, poor life expectancy, and environmental degradation. Soil is working to address three major problems in Haiti today. The first, lack of access to safe sanitation. Few Haitians have access to proper toilets, and without them, human waste pollute water sources, carrying dangerous pathogens throughout communities. Waterborne diseases are a serious problem in Haiti, where cholera alone has killed nearly 10,000 people in the past five years. Second, declining agricultural productivity. Haiti used to be one of the most agriculturally productive countries in the world. But centuries of clear-cutting to repay foreign debts and poor land management have left Haiti's soils denuded and vulnerable to erosion. As fertile topsoils have eroded, agricultural productivity has fallen dramatically. Now, despite the fact that more than half of the population farms, Haiti has to import about 50% of its food supplies. To make matters worse, chemical fertilizer is, is spreading, which further depletes soil health and further pollutes water sources with chemical runoff. Third, insufficient economic opportunity. To put it simply, people need jobs and they cannot find them. These are three huge problems, and while they may seem separate, they're actually interrelated. Because the same human wastes that are contaminating water supplies and sickening people contain the very nutrients that the soil needs to grow more food, meaning this waste is actually a resource. And that's where we come in. At Soil, we use the process of ecological sanitation, which safely transforms human waste into rich organic compost. This approach takes a tremendous public health and environmental problem and turns it into an integrated solution where we can safely reuse the nutrients to build soil fertility and provide badly needed nutrition. Let's take a closer look at, at how soil does that. We call this the poop loop. <laughs> it shows how soil is using ecological sanitation to build change in Haiti that is both environmentally and economically sustainable. It starts with safe, dignified toilets. In collaboration with Stanford University, Soil designed a container-based dry toilet 
meaning that the waste is collected in a five-gallon bucket that sits inside the toilet. Dry organic material is used to, to flush the toilet, we say. That is, to, to cover the material to prevent bad odors or flies without needing to use any water or chemicals. Using our simple, cost-effective toilets built with locally available materials, we are piloting both a household toilet business called Ecolakai and a portable toilet service, Ecomobile, that can be rented for festivals, construction sites, and other temporary events. The next step is removing the wastes, and therefore the pathogens, from the communities. Each week, soil collects the full buckets of waste from each toilet on our poop mobile and transports them to one of our treatment sites where the buckets are emptied. Next, soil uses a process called thermophilic composting to transform the waste into compost. Thermophilic composting is a natural process in which the microbes that are present in human waste digest and decompose the material. In doing so, they generate very high temperatures that kill off dangerous disease-causing pathogens. Soil carefully monitors this process and lab tests the finished compost to ensure that it's safe for handling and for agricultural use. After the compost has been thoroughly treated and tested to meet international safety standards, the finished compost can be used in one of three ways. First, soil provides some of its compost to environmental restoration projects. Compost, unlike chemical fertilizer, actually builds the health of the soil to help plants grow. It also improves soil structure and water absorption, providing increased protection against droughts and mudslides. Soil has provided compost to both small projects like school-sponsored tree plantings, as well as large-scale reforestation efforts, which are critical to restoring Haiti's environment to health. Second, soil reserves about 10% of our finished compost to do agricultural experiments. These experiments test the impact of compost on various crop yields on far and on farmers' potential earnings. Our goal is to build a data library on the optimal amount of compost to use for different kinds of crops while also demonstrating that sustainable farming techniques can also be profitable. Third, soil sells the remaining compost to local farms, community gardens, and large-scale agricultural projects, helping to support the financial viability of our waste treatment process, while at the same time helping to grow more food for Haiti's people. In sum, Soil is showing that it is possible to develop business models that transform wastes into resources. In doing so, we are employing more people to support public health, to protect water sources, to reuse valuable nutrients, to restore health to the environment, and to improve food security. So what's next? Um, in the short term, we will work to continue to refine our model through additional research and gradual scaling in Haiti's two largest cities. We're also working to further develop our relationship with the public sector. Our long-term vision is to help create and train local businesses that can replicate soil's work, not only in other cities in Haiti, but around the globe. We're so grateful to the WAF Award for recognizing and supporting soil's work, and we're grateful to you all for joining us here today. Thank you so much. Good morning and namaste. This is Rameshwar Adhikari from Nepal. I'm here with two of my colleagues. Uh, one is already introduced, Mr. Askumar and Ms. Pramina Nagamu. So firstly, I would like to express my sincere gratitude that uh, to WAF Award, and all of you for this opportunity. I'm here to present a very innovative bison filter local entrepreneurs network. And before moving on to the network detail, 
uh, I would like to let you know about the organization uh, who implement the, this project. So ENFO is Environment and Public Health Organization established in 1990, 25 years back. Uh, we recently received the first Kyoto World Water Grant Prize in 2015. Uh, we basically work with different technology that uh, different technologies such as eco sand toilets, rainwater harvesting system, household water treatment options like bars and filters, etc. Now move on to the uh, move on to the uh, network enterprise network. Why we initiate this network? The reason uh, to think for the network is uh, in Nepal, more than ten thousand children die each year for the, uh, because of the unsafe water. More than 10,000 children die each year because of the unsafe water. There are frequent cases of diarrheal epidemics in rural parts of Nepal. And uh, this has caused a huge economic burden to our country that, that is estimated around 35 million US dollar as an economic burden. So the problem is because of the poor water and lack of sustainable solution to change the situation. And for this, we start to conceptualize the, uh, a, a body. There was a need of regulating body that can, uh, there was a, that, can, that can regulate the mechanism to decentralize the technology that can be sustained, that would sustain for a long time beyond the project phase. So the concept evolved uh, as the entrepreneur's network model, and that, that model has uh, authority, that model can decentralize the technology, decentralize the knowledge, skill, and authority to different uh, uh, places. So uh, in a way, it can be replicated in different parts, different places, so that the model itself is very unique because it can repli we can replicate the model and can reach the maximum number of people to increase the impact level. The another thing is it is sustainable uh, because uh, it has very uh, uh, mechanism to generate fund for sustainability. The, they, can, they can charge a very nominal amount for each filter sold to run this body. Uh, however, it is not uh, uh, that big to expand the network, but it can be sustainable. And, uh, this network can be adopted in any other shared business. So it is very uh, kind of innovative. In terms of impact, uh, we have here direct and indirect impacts. Uh, if we say the direct impact here, more than 112,000 people are benefited with the uh, safe drinking water now. So uh, this lead to the decrease of the healthcare cost. And that, that also leads the economic growth. So this also creates the job opportunity and uplift the e economic situations in the local level. So this is the impact. Uh, so we have other examples of the impact here. So she is the lady from western region of Nepal, uh, who is from the uh, part of Nepal where people are not aware of the safe drinking water. And they, 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 there is belief that women cannot work out of their houses. So, she changed the trend after she, got, after she trend on the BSF. So she gathered her friends, she initiated, formed a woman group, she initiated her entrepreneurship, and she started to educate the village level people. And now she changed this whole community. So this is very one of the good examples. That we have another example that within this model, we have uh, uh, different uh, business examples. The entrepreneurship running by a single people, entrepreneurship running by a group of member, entrepreneurship running by the financial agency like this. Uh, this one is run by the cooperative society. So they invest, uh, they invest in the entrepreneurship uh, with the uh, vision, uh, with the vision of uh, impacting a huge number of population in a large scale. So they sold 6,000 bias and filter in just three years with the exceptional marketing strategy. That means this is obviously sustainable. This is, this is very sustainable. And 
Fear to this, they accept the, they, they gain the community acceptance for this. So this is one of the uh, uh, success, one of the most successful entrepreneur body. So we have the user level impact here. Uh, this is the father's statement that uh, his child used to get sick frequently after he bought buy some filter in his home. So the decrease of there is decrease in incidence. So this sort of case studies are the stories inspire the people, neveling people. So people are now more aware of the uh, bison filter, more aware of the uh, safe water, and uh, the impact, it has various, various ways of impact. The bison filter, let, access, let, let people access to the safe drinking water. And uh, it decreased the healthcare cost, it increased the economic status, social economic status, and even I would also like to uh, mention the, the uh, emergency work. During the emergency work, the members of this network also delivered these filters for the safe drinking water. So uh, th they also serve without uh, monetary benefit. So this is the uh, impact of the Biosan filter. And uh, for the way forward, uh, we just want to expand the network. Uh, because it's very small, there are millions of people still who, are, who do not have access to safe drinking water in Nepal. And even after the recent mega earthquake in Nepal, there are uh, damage of existing water resources, people are not having access to safe water, so they really need this. So I would like to request all of you to support in our mission to provide safe drinking water to affected people and to the poor people in Nepal. Thank you. To Professor Yu, who will deliver the project paper. <coughs> Professor Yu, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, WIF and uh, Tina, for inviting me to, to make a presentation. Uh, it's a great honor, of course. And uh, my project is about uh, a technology which is really looted from, from here, from anywhere in the world. It's about a thousand years of tradition, but we only want to reclaim it dig it and use in modern uh, uh, urban, urbanism. Slow down, uh, slow down. Uh, a symbiotic solution to urban water issues. We have the water issues, flood, drought, pollution, habitat loss, and, um, and many more, you can listen. In China, 75% of water is polluted, you can imagine. 50% of habitat got lost in, this, in the past uh, 30 years. 50% of the wetland disappeared in the last uh, 30 years. And the flood, every year we have flood and drought. 400 cities in China is suffering drought. At the same time, the same number of cities suffering flood. So the solution, where's the solution? Now here's the solution. People use, engineers use, die build a high dike, make enemy with, flood, with, with water, build, build the dams all over China. All the river have been dammed like that. All the river have been channelized, they use concrete like that. And we build pipes, huge pipes, try to drainage, to, to create a drainage system, to drain away the water. But at the same time, the city is suffering from, from uh, 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 drought. At the same time, we irrigate the, the beautiful, quote, the beautiful green space. One square meter of lawn will consume one cubic meter of water every year. And we'll remove, at the same time, we'll remove all natural vegetation. So the result is, 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 is the low down, is a dry out. The whole ground, the whole the whole ground in China is, is drying, it's drying. One meter every year in Beijing, one meter every year. The so ground level of water uh, 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 decreased, you can see. So, so engineers think we, maybe we can divert water from South China to North China. So we build such a big conve conveyor, water diverting system, try to divert water from Yangtze River to, to, uh, uh, to, to North China, to Beijing. And, uh, so at the same time, you can see the broken cycle of nutrient, which are, are, are my former presenter already mentioned. 
all the nutrients from actually from human waste and the chemicals of, of agriculture and all pollute the lakes. So 75 lakes in China of surface water is polluted. At the same time, we try to build uh, machineries, a sewage plant, try to clean up this water, but it's so costly. Burning so much coal and the air is polluted. So, so all these water issues you can see is actually related issues, but they are now disconnected. So our solution to say we needed to build a connected, in, uh, interconnected solution, we call it a symbiotic solution, to build an ecological, ecologically based solution, to build an ecological infrastructure that will provide clean water, regulating flood and drought, and supporting biodiversity, at the same time provide recreational space for urban residents. So integrate, come back to this integration again. So this project is just a one demonstration for the city in, south, uh, in southwest China. You can have all the problems at the same time, flood, urban inundation, uh, a channelized river, disappeared wetland, and also uh, 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 and all, all, all the issues. So the solution is, uh, yeah, that's the location, I'm sorry, that's the location in China. So the solution, the inspiration is from field making, farmers, field making, and farming, how we can reconnect this ecosystem. You can see, to, to slow down the process instead of speed up the process. So we build a good system, an ecosystem to slow down the whole process to create a sponge system in the, in the whole city. And of course, we want, you can see, to decentralize, to naturalize the river, and, it's a pellet, uh, and all the river system you can see, create a wetland to catch storm water, and also build all this pond system in the city at the regional scales. And even across the, across the, uh, uh, the city, you can see, we will transform the, the concrete into soft, natural system. The result is that a dramatic change. That was before and as after. Only take two years, we transform the, the whole area. You can see from create a, a series of bioswales, learn from farmers, and the terraces, learn from farmers. To filtrate the water, to slow down the water, to regulate the flood and drought. That was before and this was after. I can see it's, and the biosoil bio system, uh, they use a drain when once the slope is gentle. That was before, it was after. And, uh, and the regulating flood and drought by this system. And also uh, 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 provide the clean water because of this series of filtrators run through it. And the life supporting biodiversity, birds come back and also creates recreational space. At the same time, you can see here a beautiful space. And also increase property value around this, uh, uh, this system, wetland system. And this very simple technology, learned from farmers, can be replicated globally. So we, right now we have uh, a replication all across China, uh, and also in Indonesia, and right now we try to work also in Russia. One example is here. We manage stormwater by the simple cut and fill farming technology to solve the water. You only need 10% of urban, urban land to solve urban inundation, uh, inundation, urban flooding. You can see that was, that was built, that was before, I'm sorry, that's a two, that was before, I'm sorry. Yeah, that was before, it was uh, after. Uh, in just two years, you can see and, uh, and, and another example, we also use collect stone water to try to clean up the soil. That was before, it was after. And also we remove all the concrete to make friends with the flood. This was before, it was, it was after it had been flooded, making friends with the flood. And, and after that, it will create a really a nice, nice uh, uh, park. And another, another example is like that. You can see we have afterwards, afterwards, at the cleansing of the Huangpu River. It was before, it was after, it was after, yeah, yeah. As was before, it was after, yeah. So, to conclude, to conclude, 
is that we just need a symbiotic solution to all these multiple water solutions, to think, to think like a king, but act like farmers, like peasants, that Twinscape doing right now. Thank you. Thank you.